With this week's Cardiology Countdown, we have another new study at the number three spot looking at the duration of TV viewing and the risk of developing diabetes, MI, and death. And this was a meta-analysis of the world's literature on this, of which they called out eight large studies comprising 1.1 uh, million person years of follow-up, and found that there was about a 15% higher risk of developing diabetes, and interestingly, MI and death, all about that same percent increase per year uh, for every two hours of additional television viewing. And thus, the absolute rates would be low overall in a, in a normal population, um, and they calculated it's about a 1% to 2% absolute risk of these events over a 10-year period, uh, but one that uh, links up something that many people do uh, with a higher risk uh, of these events, and thus further impetus to get moving. At the number two spot is an interesting analysis of ambulance diversion and the risk of mortality in patients with acute MI. This would be an obvious issue if uh, the nearest hospital was closed and you had to go further. But data have been lacking about the uh, real outcome data. And so an interesting analysis of about 13,800 Medicare patients in a case control study where they looked in four counties in California, linking up zip codes of the patient and the nearest hospital, and uh, looked at how often those hospitals were on diversion. Now, amazingly, the mean time of diversion was uh, six to seven hours a day at many of these hospitals. And so when they looked, they found that people who live near hospitals who did not have uh, their hospital on diversion or up through 12 hours, there was not any apparent difference. But those who were exposed to hospitals with more than 12 hours of diversion a day had a significantly increased early and late mortality, about 3 to 4% absolute increase in mortality early that was sustained out through one year. And thus, very hard data to say that the practice of um, emergency department diversion may really be impacting poor outcomes for acute MI patients and drive uh, some policy changes to try and minimize that. And at the number one spot is a very interesting analysis done of ICDs with regard to any risk posed by driving in such patients. This was a study done um, in 2,786 patients um, from um, Leiden in the Netherlands, where they looked at both primary and secondary prevention ICD patients and their risk uh, in general in following inappropriate or appropriate shocks. In the first two categories, they did not find any increased risk for private drivers that on average they calculate drive about 4% uh, of their uh, waking hours. Whereas um, for patients who had just suffered an appropriate shock, they found a much higher risk of events and potential harm to themselves and others over the next two to four months, during which time they recommended on the basis of this restriction against driving. When looking at professional drivers, and this would be bus drivers, taxi, truck drivers, etc., they found that they spend so much time driving that the risk of harm uh, to themselves and others is too high um, uh, for any ICD patient and thus recommended that they should no longer drive professionally. This is not a society recommendation, but I think provides very interesting data that the um, uh, cardiology societies can use to help guide future recommendations. So with this week's Cardiology Countdown, I'm Chris Cannon.